The first PhD essential you need is a reference manager. You've got two options. You've got Mendeley and you've got Zotero. Mendeley or Zotero? Mendeley or Zotero. Now, when I was doing my PhD, I was really sort of like in the Mendeley camp. But now that I've been doing loads of AI tool um, experimentation, I found that actually there is a lot more support for Zotero than there is Mendeley. So if you are thinking about using a load of AI tools in your research, consider using Zotero because it has better support. But if that isn't important to you and you just enjoy good old fashioned useful software, Mendeley is a fantastic option for you. I used it all the way through my PhD, both are fine, but Zoltero at the moment I think I'd lean to because of the AI support. The second PhD essential you need is an AI toolkit. I love AI tools, it wouldn't be a video on this channel without talking about AI tools, but I have a new course, this course, Become a Master Academic Writer with AI Apps, and it talks about producing an AI toolkit that is all about you, what you need, and I give you all of the options for each part of the AI toolkit. That AI toolkit includes something for searching, something for mapping, something for reading papers, something for multi-document chat, and something for writing and editing your thesis or papers, um, and just general AI advice um, about using AI in academia. But here's a speed run through all of the important sort of tools that I think I would use in this modern PhD environment. Once I've found some papers I'd like, I start mapping them in something like lit maps. You can also use research rabbit or connected papers but lit maps is my favorite at the moment you create a map from a seed paper and you can visualize how all of that comes together mm, I love it then I want to chat with specific documents I don't have time for reading from beginning to end everything that I found so I would use something like SciSpace I'd go to my library and I'd look in and see look look at all of these things that I've just found out about sex tips yes please <laughs> Then, if I wanted to talk to a load of different documents, I would use docanalyzer.ai. I've tested a load of them. This one is the best if you want to upload a load of PDFs and chat across all of them. Really love it. Go check it out. The last thing I would use is like an editor to make sure that uh, all of my academic writing is tasty to the eyes. So, here, rightful.com. It makes your writing better. Try it out. So that's how I speed run through all of the apps that you should use, but remember to go check out my course because it's got a deep dive into all of the different areas for building up an AI toolkit for academia and research. I think you'll love it. The link is in the description. Let's get old school for a moment. You need a notebook and a pen, and I think you need two types. First of all, you need the traditional massive big notebook that goes with you when you're at the university or in your office or you take it home with you. It's the big one that's like really annoying to sort of carry around, but it has all of your thoughts, all of your opinions, all of your sort of like uh, understandings as you go through your PhD in the sciences. It's all of your results. It's all of the experiments you've done. It's your experimental notebook. It's all of the sort of like ideas that you have. It's all of the weird diagrams and uh, sort of like scratchings of an insane person into paper. But there's another sort that I see people use and I think it's just so powerful. I did it and that is using something like pocket mod. It's really simple. All you do is print off a pocket mod and you cut it up and it fits into your wallet. Brilliant. And then when you're out and about and you have that sort of like amazing idea, don't rely on your brain to remember it. Trust me, I've been doing this for years. Do not rely on your brain for remembering stuff. It is there for creativity and therefore as soon as you have this creative idea, write it down quickly. And I carry with me this little collection of tools all the time and on it I have a little pen, pink, and this little pen here is what I use to capture those little tiny thoughts and I write it down on a piece of paper or even better, a little pocket mod that you print off and then you can transfer those sort of like inspirational ideas that you've had while you've been out walking in the forest or whatever you do on a weekend and then you can put it into your notebook or into uh, a Notion file for those that are a little bit more up to date with the tech world, um, put it into whatever note taking thing that you've got. But having something immediately available to you for writing down that doesn't rely on the internet is just so powerful. I've seen really successful professors do it and you should do it too. The fifth PhD essential is a mentor. 
a mentor that you can speak to. Now, this mentor does not have to be in your research field. In fact, I would argue that it's better that this mentor is outside your research field. And that's because you need to be able to go to them and not have them think about the research, but rather the over sort of arcing uh, issues that you're having and how to solve them. If they're in the same research field, in my experience, they just go to the sort of like nitty gritty of the solution to a very specific thing. But if you have a mentor that's an academic, say outside of your field that is closely related. I had one that was in the biomedical sciences and I was a chemist. They were able to look at your experience and say, yes, this is normal in academia. This is what I did. Or no, this is completely outrageous and you need to do something else, which is what someone told me once, one of the mentors. So um, yeah, get yourself a mentor. Um, a lot of universities do offer mentoring programs. I know Flinders University, where I was, had a mentoring program for early career researchers. If you don't have one, really pressure the research office for creating one because it is just such a valuable resource and I gained a lot from it. Check out this little resource. I love the academic phrase book and it's by Manchester University. So it's phrasebank.manchester.ac.uk and here we've got all of the sort of like words and phrases that you need to make sure that you're talking about your work in an academically appropriate manner. So here, homepage at the top here, we've got introducing work, referring to sources, describing methods, reporting results, discussing findings, writing conclusions. So if you're having an issue and you're having sort of like a brain fart and you can't quite work out what to write down, go here, describing methods. Here you can see that you've got describing previous used research methods. I click here and then you've got all of these these word banks in here. One thing I love doing with this is taking these, for example, putting them into ChatGPT and say, hey, using some of these or a combination of the phrases here, talk about my results in a better way. It's a great way of sort of like refining your academic writing, but also giving you the ability to have multiple drafts directed by this phrase book. Super brilliant. And uh, yeah, you've got everything you really need in here. So bookmark this page. I'll put the link in the description because if you're just not sure, head here, do it. Every researcher I think should be on a social platform for researchers. There's two of them that I recommend, ResearchGate. ResearchGate is just brilliant. Everyone that I know is on there. It allows you to discover research, connect with the scientific community, measure your impact and everything else. Also, I love it that you can go on there and be like, hey, I need to find this paper, can you help me? And normally people are like, yes, here is my paper, which I absolutely love. Another one is Academia academia.edu. Academia.edu, I've not really used very much, but I know it's got a really great following. I know that you can get all of these PDFs. I know people love it. So either one of those is fantastic resource to be on because let's face it, academia can be pretty lonely and pretty boring. And therefore you should consider joining something like this where you can at least go on and sort of say, my supervisor is a massive pain in the ass, help me. And normally people are very, very understanding because a PhD in research has its own sort or challenges that you have to have experienced to provide support. And that's what this is all about. Really love it. Cloud storage. I have heard so many horror stories of people losing their thesis, their papers, their posters, all of the important data because their computer died. Back up, back up, back up. I do not want to hear about any subscriber on this channel losing their stuff. So make sure you have not just one, but two, if not three places where you store your data. Do a regular backup. Make sure it's on your computer. Make sure it's on a laptop, on a hard drive, and on a cloud storage device. Back when I was doing my PhD, cloud storage devices weren't really a thing, or they were very expensive. But I heard of someone who had their hard drive sat next to their computer, and the IT guy came in and formatted that hard drive with their entire PhD on. That is terrifying to me. Do not let it happen to you. Back up, back up, back up. Why do universities love open plan offices? I absolutely despise them. And you know they're not very good because people in power don't have open plan offices. They have their own ones tucked away because that's what actually is conducive to proper work, deep thinking, and you know, you collaborate in the tea room, in conferences, not in this noisy environment where someone in the corner is talking about what they did on the weekend. Oi, shut up. So what you need is a good set of headphones. I don't care which ones. I'm not gonna use an affiliate uh, deal, but I just love having headphones and I use mynoise.net to get white noise. And uh, I, yeah, have really, really benefited 
in these open plan modern environments that are not conducive to deep work for um, yeah using these making sure I can block out noise with white noise these and over the head earphones I don't know if I've got them here here they are really old pair but I love them so make sure you get yourself a good set of earphones if you're in an open plan office because it is a nightmare. I don't know why they do it. Stop making open plan offices. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one. Go check out the 12 free AI tools that are absolutely essential for your research. Go check it out.